One of the most unforgettable behemoths of the First Cold War is the M107. This long-range self-propelled howitzer with a colossal barrel made a name for itself with its achievements in the Middle East and in the China. Until the late 1970s, the M107 had remained the most effective artillery system in the Western Bloc against the Soviet 130mm M46 field gun. Now, we're investigating the M107, a true artillery legend. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start, and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. The development of the M107, which is an extraordinary self-propelled howitzer, shortly SPH, with its appearance and technical futures, began in 1956. At that time, the US Army required new air transportable heavy artillery family. The prototype, called T-235 of the M107, completed in 1957. The M107 was the little brother of the new heavy artillery family. The big brother of this family was the 203mm M110. The mission definition of the SPH was to attack the targets of high strategic value, such as command center behind the front line, gathering and storage areas. Its big brother, the M110, had been primarily designed for use against fortifications and firing 203mm nuclear artillery shells. The hull was made of welded ballistic aluminum to reduce weight. This way, the M107 became light enough to meet the criteria of air transportability. To not increase the weight, the 175mm howitzer was in the open, not inside the turret. The turretless design of the M107 was also allowing faster reload times. However, every advantage comes with a disadvantage. The turretless design, which reduced weight and increased the rate of fire, meant compromising the survivability of the crew. Only the driver could perform its duty under the armor protection. Yet, when the M107 in the firing position, this crew member was also losing its protection, because each member of the M107 crew had specific duties when the SPH was firing. The driver had to be getting out of the vehicle to operate the position spade and the barrel travel lock. Of the 13 person crew of the M107, 5 were transported by the SPH and the remaining 8 by the M548 ammunition carrier. Thanks to its 175mm 60 caliber M113 gun, the M107 became a legendary weapon. This long-range gun was the most solid answer of the Western armies against 130mm M46, which was one of the most feared Soviet artillery systems in those years. However, the M113 gun also had a serious problem. Early barrels used on the M107 had 300 firing life with the three charges. This meant that the barrel had to be changed every one or two days in an intense engagement. To solve this problem, the USA developed new barrels with a life of between 700 and 1200 rounds for the M107s. The current users of the SPH are Iran and Turkey, Germany, Greece, Israel, Italy, the Netherlands, South Korea, Spain, the UK, the USA and Vietnam are the former users of the M107. The crew of the M107 is 13 person. In traveling position, the SPH is 11.26 meters long, 3.15 meters wide, and 3.68 meters high. Its ground clearance is 0.47 meter. The combat weight is 28,170 kilograms. The 405 horsepower Detroit diesel SV71T turbocharged diesel engine provides a maximum speed of 56 km per hour. The range of the vehicle is 725 km. The M107 can negotiate 1.02 meter vertical steps, 2.36 meter trenches, and can fort a depth of 1.07 meters. 
the range of the 175mm 60 caliber gun is 15,100 meters with a single charge, 22,100 meters with two charges, and 32,700 meters with three charges. The rate of fire is one round per minute. The elevation of the gun is between negative 2 and 65 degrees. The barrel can be traversed 30 degrees on both sides. The M107 carries only two rounds. To better understand the importance of the M107, let's take a brief look at the M46 as well as US artillery systems in use at that time. The Soviet Navy had begun to equip its destroyers and coastal batteries with 130mm B-13 naval guns just before the Second World War. This long-range gun soon attracted the attention of the Soviet Army. However, for the Army, which had plenty of 122mm and 152mm ammunition, the transition to a 130mm gun wasn't easy. With the attack of Nazi Germany on the USSR in 1941, it became impossible for the Soviet Army to make a radical change. However, with the end of the Second World War, the development of a B-13 based field gun began again. The new gun, named M46, which started mass production in 1951, had a significant advantage over Western artillery systems with a range of 27,500 meters. In the Second World War, the USA fought with a large air force that gave it air superiority. Therefore, after the war, the US Army was not very interested in using long-range artillery systems to strike behind the front. For the Western world, the performance of the existing M114 and M1 Long Tom 155mm towed howitzers were sufficient. Also, the US Army was in favor of investing in SPHs rather than towed howitzers. Therefore, instead of developing a new long-range 155mm gun, the budget was allocated to procure the M44 SPH. However, the M114 had a range of 14,600 meters, the M1 Long Tom 23,700 meters, and the M44 only 15,000 meters. None of these guns was able to answer the M46. Nevertheless, until the late 1970s, the West didn't produce an artillery system other than the M107 that could respond to the M46. Although it has a range of 32,700 meters, the most important disadvantage of the M107 from its rival was the rate of fire. The rate of fire of the M46 was 6 to 7 rounds per minute. However, its 130mm 53VOF 482V projectile contains 3.64 kg of explosive, while the 3VOF 43 projectile contains 4.17 kg of explosives. The M107, on the other hand, was able to send 14.96 kg of explosive with a single projectile. There was also the 175mm ERSC Mark 7 Mod 7 projectile, which had the maximum range of 40,000 meters. Although Israel used this projectile, the US Army didn't adopt it. The firing position of an M46 could not be changed easily. However, the M107 was able to move rapidly after the completion of its fire. This was a very important advantage in terms of avoiding counter-battery fire and tactical deployment. The M107 had relatively low accuracy at long range. However, its rival, the M46, also had this problem. To better understand these comparisons, let's take a look at the M107's combat experience. In the Vietnam War, its long range and ability to move from its previous position rapidly made the M107 an effective artillery system. The SPH was used to destroy the command and control centers, communications facilities, and supply columns of the North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong successfully. Besides, the M107s were able to evade counter-battery fire of the M46 of the North Vietnamese Army. For example, during the 1968 Battle of the Khe San, with the help of the M107 alongside with the other fire support units, the
The US Marines managed not only to withstand the North Vietnamese attack for a long time, but also break out the siege. Still, the fortune wasn't always on the side of the M107. In particular, the South Vietnamese Army losses were higher than those of the US Army. During the 1972 Easter Offensive, the South Vietnamese lost several M107s when they tried to stop the artillery shelling of the North Vietnamese Army. Also, the 56th Infantry Regiment of South Vietnam surrendered with its four M107s during the battle at Cu Quang Tri. Another 12 M107s were captured during the Central Highlands Offensive in 1975. North Vietnamese Army used these captured SPHs in their last offensive against South Vietnam. Throughout the war, South Vietnam lost more than 90 M107s. The M107 was a weapon appreciated by North Vietnam. They successfully used these SPHs in large numbers against the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. The M107s, which Israel supplied in 1971, played a key role in its war of life and death two years later. During the most critical hours of the Golan Front of the 1973 Yom Kippur War, the artillery support provided by these SPHs gave Israel soldiers hope. It was able to silence all her opponents with a counter-battery fire. Even Damascus was within range of an M107 deployed in the Golan Heights. The M107 was also essential in the Sinai Front. When the Israelis set foot in the Egyptian side of the Suez Canal in the Operation Gazelle, these SPHs were among the first to cross together with tanks and APCs. They destroyed 13 of the 15 Egyptian SA-2 batteries. The Israeli Air Force was now able to fly comfortably over the front. Critical hours for Israel were over. But the M107 was not invincible either. A four-gun M107 battery of Israel was destroyed by a rocket salvo of Arab BM-21 Grads. The Iraqi hunters destroyed the Israeli 329th Battalion's at least three SPHs. Despite the high cost, the low rate of fire, the low payload, Israel still kept these SPHs for a long time because of its matchless range advantage. The M107 was also extensively used by Iran during the Iran-Iraq war. These SPHs succeeded in stopping the Iraqi troops before they could leave their gathering areas for an assault. However, the M107 could not survive the developing technology. Today's 155mm howitzers can send their rounds further away from it. They can fire faster and have high accuracy. Besides today, no one produces 175mm ammunition. For this reason, at most, the life of the remaining M107s is as much as 175mm ammunition remained in the arsenal. After all, Many users of this SPH converted their M107s to the M110A2. Until the last decade of the First Cold War, the M107 was one of the free world's biggest assurances against long-range Soviet artillery. Not only for its achievements, but also its majestic appearance, it was both a feared and admired enemy for the Eastern Bloc. The M107 was Dirty Harry with his long-barreled 44 Magnum. It was assigned to every dirty job that comes along in Vietnam and the Middle East and became a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like our video.